Hey guys, Brian from WorkshopAddict.com and we have the new Milwaukee 56 inch high capacity toolbox here. This was a tough purchase at $1,498, but a lot of you guys wanted to see it. So we're gonna replace this 46 inch high capacity over here with the larger box, use it for a while. Although there's some very, very serious similarities between the two, that 10 extra inches of space will help us out a little bit. Is this box worth $1,500? Man, that's a tough call. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for uh, some of your comments below and see what you think. I'm gonna say no, it's a $999 box. I haven't seen any sales on it yet, but let's go through this guy. We're gonna go through assembly. We're gonna go through what's on the inside. We're gonna rip the drawers out. We're gonna look behind it. We're gonna look at the bottom and say, what does a reinforced frame mean? We're going to tear apart some of the drawers, modify some things that we don't like, go through the electronic locks, and just give you an idea of what you're getting for 15 bills. It's a tough call. I can tell you while I was in the store waiting for them to take this off the shelf, I hesitated multiple times, and uh, it's here, but I can tell you I'm not overly thrilled. So, first, if you're looking at the store, they have three different SKUs for this. One SKU for the top box and the bottom box together. You're going to be hard pressed to find that SKU in the stores. Don't worry about it. If you're searching under that SKU and you can't find it anywhere and it only comes in a delivery, it's because the stores sell it with two SKUs, the bottom and the top separately. You can find them at most stores. They'll have them. We have a very small Home Depot in town. They had two of these boxes in stock. They weren't really thrilled at getting it off the shelf because they had it way up high, but either way, you can get it that way. Same cost if you buy the bottom separately with the top separate, $14.98. Assembly of this or how it comes, it comes bottom one was on a skid, top one was box only. Bottom skid was broken and it was broken over by the casters that swivel. Those casters were sticking out and I hear that's normal. When you look at the way this is put together, they kind of staple some wood in there and if they slide it at all, those pieces come out and you're left with the two wheels that are hanging down low. Make sure you check those out that they're not bent. Ours were not bent, but both of the lower cabinets had that skid broken on that side, which is odd. I've also read some reviews. They were broken down there. When you pull this apart, the easiest way to take this cabinet out is to remove everything from the top, uh, the cardboard, the styrofoam, and then disassemble your skid on the bottom by using a 13 millimeter socket, pulling out all those legs, you can kind of just separate the wood and everything will slowly come down to the ground if you're careful, that way you don't have to lift this box out. Now when you're assembling, it's very simple. You're just basically putting on some bumpers. If you want to put on your folding utility shelves, any little cord wraps, it's simple stuff. There's not a whole hell of a lot to it. We just went at it, got together. Once the bottom was together, we pulled out all of the drawers to look on the inside. Basically, it's all sheet metal. It's 18 gauge sheet metal that's throughout. Everything was powder coated. Assembly quality is here and there. Some of the welds are good in some places. Some of the welds are light in other places. Some of the rivets still have uh, sharp pieces on them. Uh, we found some rivets in the back. It doesn't look horrible, but there is no place in here that has any tube steel. It's all bent sheet metal. What you think might be reinforced is just sheet metal that's bent around into a U. I don't know, man. I, I guess I expected a little bit more underneath here, uh, but there isn't. When you flip it up on the side, we want to see what that reinforced frame was on the bottom. And I expected to see some box steel around here, but it was all angle iron which is identical in construction to the Husky that's behind me. And this 56 inch Husky behind me is 1,098 at the store. You probably won't find it in the store. You probably have to order that one online. So I was a little disappointed to see that the construction of this wasn't significantly better than a lot cheaper Husky behind us. Either way, it's still decent. They say it'll hold 3,000 pounds. 
I can tell you from moving around our 46 inch that is fairly loaded, it's not gonna roll great, even though they have industrial plastic casters on the bottom with larger tires. It, it works, it rolls, put a lot of weight in it, not so much. So lifting the top cabinet on top, make sure you have two people. You can get it done with one. We used an engine hoist and a little bit of our lift. I wouldn't suggest doing that. Um, I'm not gonna show you that. Do as I say, don't do as I do here. But it's nice when you put it together. 10 inches wider and it's gonna take the place of our 46 that's sitting here. What I did in addition to, because something I hated about the 46 inch model is you have a bottom drawer on the top that is meant for a computer desk. It's nice if you use a computer, I guess. Uh, we don't. We don't use anything on here. We have all kinds of places to work on something else and set things and we don't need our toolbox to do it. So I drilled out the rivets, pulled this out so we have a full drawer. That drawer was always wasted on our 46 and I just thought, screw it, we're getting an extra drawer here. We need it anyway. One of the big things I see on this toolbox compared to the 46 or compared to the Husky is how they laid out the drawers. Basically they just widened each side of the drawers compared to the 46 and said, oh, we're just gonna give you a little bit larger toolbox. And I think that's okay for a lot of people, but for me in some mechanical tools, I wanna to separate my screwdrivers in different areas. I wanna have specialty tools and not have a bunch of groupings of them in these drawers. So I don't have any really small drawers to separate out different types of tools. So. When you open a drawer here, let's say this is screwdrivers, we have a large area for a ton of screwdrivers, but we might have to have something else beside them. So I'm gonna have multiple things in drawers. I'm not a fan of that. I would rather see more of a snap-on style, small, thin drawers, multiple drawers all over the place. I think it would help it hold more tools and give you better organization. After organization, we have some of our safety features here, which would be the locks. This is interesting compared to a normal lock because it's digital. It does take a watch battery and you can get at it with these two tiny Phillips screws underneath that cover. Now, how it works. It's just like any other one. It's locked. It's unlocked. So if you put it in the locked mode, if you want to check this out in the stores, the code is one, two, three, four and you hit OK, it will lock itself there. You can't unlock it until you put in one, two, three, four, and hit OK again, it'll allow you to unlock this. Now that's the user code, you also have a master code. There can be 15 people that can get into this or 15 different codes, um, but here's what I dislike. You go down to the bottom, and we lock it, one, two, three, four, OK. didn't work. I can't get this bottom one to lock. So basically I have a unit down here that is faulty and doesn't work. That's kind of what I'm fearful of long term here is what about when this battery goes dead? Okay, now let's go through that. We're going to lock the top one, two, three, four locked, right? Let's say that my battery goes dead. I've got keys. So no issue. So I can unlock it. Now they warn you, do not pull these keys out in the wrong position. So these keys do not come out. So I can unlock it, leave the key there. I can lock it and pull the key out. Not horrible, but let's say that I want to have it unlocked and I want to lock it with the key. Put the key in, lock, I can't get the key out. So if the battery's dead and it was unlocked, I can get the key out unlocked, I go to lock it, key won't come out. I think that's a bad deal here because for the guy who says, screw this electronic lock, I just want to use my key, you can't. Now here's another thing I was hoping they would fix and it's the same issue on the 46 inch model. These large drawers pull out, they expose the full drawer at least on the bottom. Now when you pull out this skinny drawer, everybody wants to put their wrenches up here 
This drawer comes out about the same, but you have this overhang. And that overhang really kind of traps some smaller tools up in there, and it doesn't allow you to get to them as easy. If this one came out just a little bit further, it would allow us to get at that, but they really didn't change the hinges. So that's still kind of a complaint on mine. It happens on this small drawer in the bottom too. All the skinny drawers that are right next to the, any of the red frames, you have a hard time getting to the back of, so that makes the drawers a little bit smaller. Milwaukee is saying that these drawer slides now hold 150 pounds, uh, which I believe is the same as a 46, and your bottom two will hold 300 as they have dual slides on each of the bottom drawers. They work well, and you do have a power tool organizer over here. Um, we've used it, not used it. It's everyone's choice, I guess. A lot of you guys commented that you're going to put ratchets and wrenches in the skinny drawer and hopefully fill the bottom with some sockets. Now we have our Wessling machine socket holders. These are half inch. They just squeak underneath. So if you have anything thicker than maybe this quarter inch piece here, you are not going to get your sockets down in the bottom. While this has remained the same as the 46 inch model, what I do like is Milwaukee gives you a lot of different places to screw things into, giving you the option of putting things ambidextrously on either side. And we actually have our other one cluttered up uh, with the extension cord holder, just things that make this work for us. And it hasn't changed from the other old 46 inch model, but it gives you a lot of options and I like that part. So going through this, probably saying, hey, you're a little negative on the box. It's an awesome box. And it is. If you're looking for a new box and you have the budget for the $1,500, I really like the fact that the 10 extra inches up top is giving us a ton more space. Any horizontal surface that's sitting here sometimes for us will get filled. As you can see, this guy's got chargers and just stuff that people said, hey, we need a power outlet. Let's get it going really quick. It sits there. Um, but if a little bit more organization, less people in the shop, I think this is a great place to put a lot of different tools, a lot of different things you can access quickly. Uh, we keep our sockets up here because we're accessing them all the time. Is that the best place? Probably not. It would be nice to have them in a drawer, but it works for us. There's a lot of different things you can do with this box. I just wish that they changed a few things. The electric locks. I can see where they're trying to say, hey, 15 people can access it. This is awesome. You can put it in a shop. I'm not sure this is a shop box. I think this is a great box for at home where, and, and I think that this electronic stuff probably will appeal to more of the home guy and he won't lose his key. Other than that, I, I think everything is laid out pretty well. I'd like to see another set of drawers. In fact, I'd like to see them mimic the top of this Husky and put the bottom of the Milwaukee on here. And I think you'd have a kick-ass box that would hold a lot of wrenches and a lot of different items. Again, I can wish in one hand, right? Uh, you need 82 inches to open this up basically and, and not hit anything. Again, it's 22 inches deep. They say in here you have a total capacity of 43,612 cubic inches of space for total capacity. That's a lot. What's it come out to? Uh, I, I really wanted to show you guys this box full, but we label everything. We have a bunch of guys that are out here. So we go through and put everything in this box, label where most of the important things are, and we're gonna change up some things. So we're gonna go through this and load this a little bit slower and try to get everything correct before we throw our, all our labels on it. So can't walk you through it yet. We can do it again if you wanna see it once it's completed. Uh, leave those comments for me in the description. I don't know guys, I'd be tough. I, I, I'd, be, I'd have a hard time saying, would I recommend this box over the Husky? I think I'd go with the Husky 56. Just if you, have, if you have a lot of hand tools, a lot of wrenches, a lot of ratchets, and you wanna separate things out, similar to how I discussed before, you have a lot of small drawers over here. We just have screwdrivers, one drawer. Perfectly fits them, you don't have to worry about it. You can separate things out and have a drawer for everything. If that's the way you are, you might go a little crazy with these larger drawers. 
$1,500 could almost buy you two standard 46 inch boxes and you could fit more in the two 46 inch boxes than you could this one 56 inch box. So the pricing on that to me is a little skewed. The only difference between the standard 46 and this high capacity is two inches of depth. That two inches of depth is big and this one drawer here is probably big to everyone because they like this skinny drawer. But if you had two boxes compared to the one, it's gonna take up more space in your garage. But again, more tools, almost the same cost. Very tough to make a decision here as to what I would spend my money on because of the price. And I think that's really what's stopping me from saying, man, go out and buy this thing because I wish I had better locks, although the locks work well. I wish I had an option of just saying, you know what, I wanna go old school and have a key. Don't really have that option. And maybe I'm using them wrong. Leave the comments in the description. If I am, I'd like to retract that statement. If there is something there, I don't think so. But always possible. Again, even $12.99, I think I would be like, yeah, you're on the edge. $9.99, I'd say go for this thing all day. Same price as the Husky behind me. I'd probably say go for it if you're if you want red and you want something flat and you like Milwaukee. And marketing guys is is been there. Milwaukee is is taken over and done so many cool things. I think so many people love Milwaukee. It's a Chevy Ford thing. I really like what Chevy's doing with sports cars. I really like what Ford's doing with trucks. Whatever you want to get in there in your own personal opinion. I really want that Milwaukee toolbox and they're commanding a high price, but I'm gonna pay it because it's Milwaukee, and I feel like that's where this box is. There's some cool features that I don't think were really thought through really well, and all these boxes are made by the same company. Let's not fool ourselves. This Milwaukee, made by the same place, same factory as this Husky. They're all the same. It is what it is. So. I appreciate you sticking with me through this video. We'd be happy to show you more of what's going on in the future. Stick with us, you'll see this box is gonna take this place. We gotta move around some things so everything fits. But good luck if you're buying your box. Leave me some comments. I wanna chat with you guys. Tell me what you know. I will respond as quickly as possible. Thanks for your time. Have a great day.